Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to reduce the size of our PDF files. We can reduce the size of our PDF by going to the Document dropdown, and here is the function, Reduce File Size. So we've seen a similar dialog box before where we can add multiple files and we can see the size of our files right here. But let's just do it for this file. Usually we need our files to be under 20,000 kilobytes or 20 megabytes in order for them to be sent via email. So my file is good, but let's see what we can do to reduce its size further. So we have a very simple quality gradient right here and we can turn this slider to, towards compression or quality. So basically if we want to retain quality more we can just shift it and it looks like we can't really shift it as much as we want. We have to go to these little increments so we can have a slight reduction in quality. We can basically reduce our size just a little bit and retain as much quality as we can by reducing the slider all the way to the left. Or we can go the opposite direction and we can do that. Now before we just use this slider which only has really five options, let's actually look at something else. We have custom presets down here and we can check this on we can actually give custom presets a name. Now we haven't done this yet, so it says edit preset here. So now it's time to click on the edit button and this is where all the magic really begins. Once we click on edit, we can see that there's so many more functions. Here we have a lot more options and we can really customize the way that we reduce our file size. So starting from the top left, we basically can choose whether or not we wanna keep all of our colors at full we can also change our dots per inch or DPI. So for example, if I set this to 100 instead of 150, that will make a pretty significant difference. So I can change that. And our bit depth, we can even change that to older styles of color schemes. So for example, if we didn't need to use colors and we just wanted this to be in grayscale, we can change it here and actually physically change the document itself so that it will actually be grayscale instead of just printing in monochrome or grayscale. So this is a great option right here, for example. We can then choose our quality here from low, medium, and high to keep our colors so that they're decent, but we can just keep it at medium and that will already help us. And we can see that there's a count here, and this is telling us how many different objects are actually going to be affected by this. So the full color will get affected by eight objects, which is quite significant. Looks like 8-bit color, we don't have any 8-bit colors according to our count. And the grayscale, looks like we have one thing that's in grayscale already, so we can change that further if we wanted to. Let's set that to 100, for example. And let's look down here at these three options. Automatically reduce bit depth and compatible images. There are five images that we could do this with in this document. I already know that there's one up here and one down here, for example. So we could do that if we wanted to. And this is actually applying to all six pages of this PDF set, not just the first page. So that's why we're going to see lots of different objects that we might not see on this first page. The second option is remove ICC color profiles. We could do that if we wanted to. Ooh, and this last one is combine identical indexed color spaces. So that will help a little bit. I don't understand what all of this exactly means, but basically these will help to reduce your file size. Now look at this. We can already see down here what the file size is estimated to be after all these changes are made. So we're going from about 8,000 bytes, or excuse me, 8 million bytes and about 8,000 kilobytes to about 2,000 kilobytes, which is great. We're reducing the file size by a significant portion, 68%. That's really, really good. So let's continue looking through here. Let's see if there's anything else. Now, before we continue, we do have presets that we can save. So once we have this set the way we want to, for example, I've changed my max DPI to 100 for both full color and grayscale, we can then save our preset. Before we do, we have a few more tabs up here to look into. So let's go to the fonts tab right here. This tab allows us to basically drop things. Drop means to remove. So if there's any embedded files, we can just drop them completely. Looks like there are eight of them, and this will significantly help. Two million bytes is 2,000 kilobytes, which is two megabytes. That's great. So if we wanted to, we can drop embedded items. Now, we need to be careful. Some embedded items are important. Any file attachments count as them. And I do have a file attachment right down here in the bottom left. That is my digital ID. So that's very important for me to keep. So I'm actually not going to drop embedded, just in case. I do want to keep my embedded files, and I want them to be available for other people to extract if they need to. Now, look down here, there's a little star. Please note that content usually cannot be reduced. 
Content refers to vector data. So that means that if you want your vector data to maintain its original smart information, if you want to be able to snap to the lines and draw uh, from the midpoint of certain lines, for example, or the endpoints, basically, you can't really change vector data too much in order for it to still be vector data. Now, if you really wanted to, you could actually print a PDF with vector data, basically print it as a PDF, and that will turn everything in the PDF into raster data. Now, raster data can't really be interacted with too much. It's essentially a scanned image, you could say. And so that could help a little bit with file size if you don't need to interact with certain aspects of the document or you're not expecting somebody that's receiving your documents to need to measure on the document, for example because it's very hard to measure on raster files. It's possible, but you're not going to be very accurate. Moving on, let's go to miscellaneous. We actually have a lot of different options here, and we can see what all of these options is going to give us. So free XREFs, that means that if there were any external references that came from any CAD files that this used to be, for example, this was a CAD file and then it was converted into a PDF, then any of those XREFs could be removed if we wanted to. And it looks like that's a significant amount of data. But once again, just like going back here to the drop embedded, we need to be very careful because embedded files and XREFs could have key information that we might want to keep. So I'm actually going to uncheck that. I don't need to drop that. Now, after unchecking that, we can already see that our file reduction is actually very minimal because it looks like the size of our file is actually dictated by those XREFs and embedded information. It takes up roughly half of the current file size. So by unchecking them, we don't have much to reduce, but we have more that we can look into. And that quality slider can also help us by going back to the previous dialog box. So let's look at all of these from top to bottom. Metadata could be useful, but some metadata is important. So we could drop it if we wanted to. Private data probably has to do with any data that is locked by security. So we could drop that if we wanted to. It looks like I don't have any metadata or private data, so that doesn't really apply in this case. Compress all streams. I don't know exactly what that means, but it looks like about 10,000 bytes are associated with that. Not a huge amount, so I'm going to leave that as it is. If I had extra thumbnails, then I could drop them, but I don't, so we're good to go. This does not include the thumbnails found for each page in the thumbnails list, so we're good on that front. If there are any unused resources, we can drop them. This refers to some data in the background, so that's actually not a bad idea. I'm going to drop that. And moving past drop free extracts, we have crop content to crop box. We could do that, and what that will do is it's going to basically make sure that any content that has large boxes will be cropped as much as possible. Looks like I don't have any content to crop, so we're good there. And we don't have any XREFs, so we don't need to dereference them. Referencing them means connecting them to this file, and that does take up a little bit of space, but we don't have to worry about it in this file. So let's go back. Let's make sure that everything here is looking good. Uh, if we really want to reduce the file size further, we can change our DPI a little bit more. Looks like changing it from 100 to 72 gave us a nice decrease. So it's about uh, a little less than a percent, it looks like, for at least the full color items that I have. And the grayscale ones, we only have one item, so it doesn't really matter how much I reduce it. So once we're done, we can save our preset. Let's call this Reduce File Size Tutorial for this instance, and then we'll click OK. And now we'll click OK here. And in the future, I can now use this preset. I don't have to go back and change those settings every single time. And if I want to edit presets, I can just click on Edit Preset and click on Edit, and I can go back and make a new preset. And so let's say that I wanted to reduce the size a bit more. We can then go to Slight Reduction in Image Quality. That should help a little bit. If we go back to Edit, let's see if that tells us any more information. So it looks like that slider is separate from these custom settings. So the custom settings will help, but the slider should help us a bit more. So even though it seems like we're only going to get rid of 10% according to that other dialog, this one should help a bit more. Let's see what happens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Save. And this is a very, very important dialog box. Do you want to overwrite the existing file? To save a copy, click No. And this is very important. Just in case, especially if you want to be currently working on these files and you know that these are not final final submittals, you always want to say no to this. You don't want to replace the original file. You could lose a lot of quality. You could lose certain data such as file attachments if you had those settings checked on. So in this instance, we're going to say no. And then a new box should appear. There we are. And now I can save this as a different file name. 
So I'm going to have it as a similar name, but I'm just going to put underscore reduced and then click on save. Now let's see our new file should open automatically. It's reducing the size and let's see what happens. Not bad. So it looks like from 10%, it was actually combining with that slider and it looks like we have about a 37.8% decrease. Excellent. So now our final size is about five megabytes. That's really, really good compared to eight megabytes. And we could have done even more with it. Now, this is our new file. Let's inspect it to see what exactly dropped in quality. I'm just going to save this just to make sure that it is all good to go. And it looks like most of our vector data has maintained itself. So anything that's vector data automatically refreshes as you zoom in on it. So we can't really tell what happened there. A better example would be this picture here. Already I can see, wow, look at all these changes. So. It looks like some objects were in the background in this, and so these dots here have appeared, and these were not here in the original picture. But it looks like they were probably there as very faded lines, and by reducing the size, we can actually see them a bit more, and now we can see those dots exist. Also, the text here has been reduced a lot. This is a raster data image, so it doesn't have any smart data. So it's definitely been reduced a bit too much. <laughs> so we definitely want to go back to our original file and fix that. And this image has also been reduced a lot. It's much more pixelated than it used to be. I can barely read what these icons are now. But if we just used it as a placeholder, then we haven't really changed too much. We can still see the image and it actually still fulfills its purpose. So in many instances, reducing your file size in this way can help a lot, especially if you have a lot of images and other embedded data on your file. Thanks very much for watching our tutorial on how to reduce the file size of your PDFs with review. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.